I'm Barbara Horgan from Boffins. We're very fortunate to have award-winning English novelist Tim, Tom Rob Smith pop into Boffins today after being part of the Perth Writers Festival. Welcome to Perth, Perth Tom. Thank you very much for having me. Firstly, congratulations on writing such a magnificent literary novel. We've found that word of mouth is selling the farm so well. People, people are coming in and saying, I've heard about this book, The Farm, have you got it? And uh, it's been terrific and it's, it's, um, I'm amazed at how quickly it's been selling since it's um, come into the smaller format. Well, that's wonderful to hear. I mean, word of mouth is so important for an author. Yes, yes. Now, you're the son of a Swedish mother and an English father, as are Tilda and Chris in, in the farm. What made you decide to, for this combination in the novel? You know, well, the novel draws from a seed of reality, and right. the seed that it draws upon is four years ago, um, I was living in London, and yep. uh, my parents had retired to a farm in rural Sweden. Wow. <laughs> and I received a phone call from my uh, father saying my mum had been institutionalised, she was um, suffering from a psychosis, and he says, you've got to fly out to see her. So obviously, um, I booked a flight to Sweden. Um, I was totally surprised, and you came out of the blue. I had no inkling mm. that anything was wrong with my parents, and their retirement seemed to me happy from afar. Before I could take that flight, I got a call from my mother saying uh, she wasn't in the hospital, she wasn't mad, my dad was lying, and he was involved in a criminal conspiracy, and she was coming to London to tell me the truth. So that is the premise for this book that started. Yes. And I had some, I then ripped up my ticket to Sweden, waited at the airport, and my mum arrived. And I took her back to my apartment, and I had to decide whether she was ill or whether my dad was involved in a criminal conspiracy. And that is the premise for the book. Yeah, well, that's why I'm bobble eyed thinking this is the novel. Mm. Um, now, your description of place in the farm um, is so vivid. Did you spend time? in Sweden? Yeah, I spent a lot of time in Sweden. Mm. Um, as a child, I grew up in London, but I yeah. used to spend my summer holidays in Sweden. Yes. So it was this academic year in London, yeah. um, the summers in the sort of remote rural Sweden. And for me, uh, I had the best of both worlds. I had the city and the country. I mean, Sweden was a place of great beauty mm. and, and, and lightness. I, mean, I had very many wonderful memories from there. I can, yeah, I can understand, because you, the, the feeling of place there, I mean, uh, I've been to Sweden, but I haven't been into the sort of the country part of Sweden, and it, it really, I was, I was there. I'm pleased. Yeah. Now, the plot of the farm is, is complex, and the ending is completely unexpected, but sort of on reflection, I found it made perfect sense. How did you go about ensuring that the recollections of the events uh, more accurate. But did you have a timeline, or how did you how did you do that? Because it was it was complex. Yeah, it's a massive jigsaw puzzle, mm. and everything. I mean, there was one key rule I had, which was that um, there should be no trickery through the book. Yes. So it's full of surprises. Oh, and, absolutely. But you shouldn't, when you look back, as 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 you say, feel like, well, that was a cheat, or I don't, you know, I go with it, but it was a fiction. I felt like I really wanted it to all make sense in some way which is a strange novel for a book about things not making sense. Yes. Um, and so it was It was complicated. You knew you couldn't do a certain kind of thing. Often um, in thrillers you're dealing with absolutes, mm. but in this book you're dealing with a question of what is real, what yes. did happen, and so yes. everything has to have two sides to it. Yes. Um, and it has to be, is it this version of events or is it this version of events? And so that was the sort of organising structure of the book. Gosh, yes. No, I, I was, when I finished it, I thought, wow, how did you get all this together uh, to be able to make sense and to have it to be such a, a surprise? It was, it, I knew you had to, it would have been difficult, but you, you nailed it. Thank you. Now, Child 44, The Secret Speech and Agent 6, they're all fantastic literary uh, uh, thrillers featuring um, Leo Dimidoff. Will you be writing another trilogy? Another trilogy, mm. uh, what a, a completely different. Yes, yes. Well, you, I love the f I love the form, which yes. is in a sense three separate stories, but yep. telling one big story. Yes. It's, a, it's a beautiful form. I yes. think, um, yeah, possibly. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed writing the Leo Demidoff trilogy. It's very much finished. Yes. So there's not a possibility of a fourth book. Really. No, but, no, no, no. That's um, why I said, are you going to do exactly. another one? Because I've had, I've had uh, 
customers coming in asking what you're going to do another one because they come to that conclusion as well. I, w I do love the floor. Mm. I, did, I did really enjoy writing it. So yes, I think I probably will at some point. Good. Now, now also, the Child 44 has been made into a movie and I read that you'd actually participated in the, scri in the script. How much input was involved? No, I, uh, the screenplay was written by Richard Price. Yeah, but I, it said that... You, no, I've been on set and things, oh, and like, no, I, it, it was know. a very casual involvement. Oh, right, I was okay. basically a tourist. I got to visit the set, I got yeah. to meet everyone, and everyone was lovely. Yeah. But I've seen the movie, it's really great. Are you ha you're happy with really it? really happy. It yeah. comes out in Australia April 30th. Yes, so I, knew it was, I knew it was uh, quite recent. I think you recent. guys are really going to like it. Sure, I'm really sure, yes. Now, you're an amazingly diverse writer because you're a novelist and you're a poet and you're a screenwriter. So, and I was intrigued to, to read that you, you worked as a writer and a, a, screen, a screen editor in Cambodia's first soap opera for the BBC. What was that like? It was a brilliant job. Uh, I was 24 and it was a great opportunity to go and live in another country and to tell stories based in that country. And I don't think I could have written Child 44 if I hadn't had that experience, which was, soaking up the world and then mm. trying to find a story to tell tell in it um it was uh yeah a, a very precious experience to me and as i said i think child 44 was dependent upon that experience well and also you must be looking at russia now and thinking it's just happening all over again it's really interesting you asked that question because when i published uh, child 44 I, in the interviews i was very much saying this isn't a criticism of Russia. This is a story about totalitarian regimes and how we all might behave under that regime. And I think that's the interesting thing about writing that mm. book and about reading that book. You think, what would I have done? Um, that is the sort of central driving force of that book. And now, looking at Russia, I am amazed, amazed mm. at how we are, well, they are at war. Yes. Uh, yes. And they are being run by a man who seems to disregard many of the basic rules of governing a country. Oh, it's a megalomaniac in a way, really, isn't he? He's, I yeah. find him, I find him scary. Yes, yeah, so I do I. Him, and I find him scary, and I mean that in a sort of profound way, as opposed mm. to a sort of, um, you know, he's boring on a sort of global scale. Mm. Well, thank you, Tom, for popping in today, and, and you've given us hours of enjoyment, given me, and I know many readers around the world, and I look forward to your next novel. Thank, well, thank you for you. coming. Thank you for having me.